hers. Wait a minute. Uh, let me have all that again, now. As a matter of fact, Doctor, this is Dr. Beagleman's case. Well, never mind the professional ethics. What happened? I don't know why I'm covering up for that son of a bitch in Farkas Pavilion anyway. The patient, a man of 56, was admitted to the hospital 10 days ago in good health for a checkup. No visible distress. We did the mandatory workup on him, blood culture, stools, LE preps, chest, EKG, all negative. However, there was some evidence of protein in his urine. I don't know how that son of a bitch in Farkas Pavilion found out about it. Maybe he had one of a deal with one of the girls in the lab. Anyway, turned up the next day, conned the patient into signing an authorization for a biopsy. What son of a bitch in Farkas Pavilion? Some post-grad fellow named Ives, Sir Elroy Ives. I never met him. It's on one of the immunology research programs. Are you trying to tell me some post-grad fellow came up here and did a biopsy on the patient? Yes, sir. He conned Beagleman with that old story about protein. Protein in the earth. Yes, sir. And he biopsied the man? And he nicked a vessel in it. Two in the morning, they woke up Beagleman because the nurse found the patient in shock. Beagleman called the kidney people for a consult right away. Well, what was there to see? The patient was sour and bleeding. We spoke to this fellow Sutcliffe. He referred us to a surgeon named Welbeck. Welbeck? That barber? You ain't heard nothing yet. We finally got Welbeck around four in the morning. He said, go ahead, so they laid on the surgery for eight. Wolbeck turned up half stoned, orders an IVP, clears him for allergies. Without actually testing. Right. And the patient went into shock. And tubular necrosis. They lopped out the bleeding kidney, ran him back to the room. We sat around waiting for urine. Fever began spiking like hell, uremia vomiting, so we arranged hemodialysis. He's putting out good water now. But some nurse goofed on his last treatment. A shunt separated something. Blood pressure plunged. They ran him up to ICU, given two units of whole blood. All vital signs are normal now, except he's comatose. That was two days ago. In short, a man comes into this hospital in perfect health. And in the space of one week, we chop out one kidney, damage another, reduce him to coma, and damn near kill him. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, Brubaker, last night I sat in my hotel room, reviewing the shambles of my life and contemplating suicide. And I said, no, Buck, no, don't do it. You're a doctor, you're a healer. You are the chief of medicine at one of the great hospitals of the world. You are a necessary person. Your life is meaningful. And then I walk in here today, and I find out that one of my doctors was killed by a couple of nurses who mistook him for a patient because he screwed a technician from the nephrology lab. Hematology. And now you come to me with this gothic horror story in which the entire machinery of modern medicine has apparently conspired to destroy one lousy patient. Now, how am I to sustain my feeling of meaningfulness in the face of this? 